All right, our brother from another, Dr. Jason Johnson, is here wearing a dope sweatshirt as usual. And Jason, you were listening to our, our previous conversation. You said uh, during the break, I got lots of thoughts on this. So we were just talking about, is there one way of success? And we're saying that there's not just one way of being successful, talking about sports, but kind of branched off into corporate America. You have some thoughts, what are they? So first off, uh, after all this time in the sun, I can't tell y'all apart. Like I saw the pictures, <laughs> y'all, y'all clearly spent a lot of time in the sun. I'm like, I can't tell which Michael's Michael anymore. I'm just, I, I was like, that's not the one. But I'm really confused here. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't coming oh, off of burning up out there. You did not realize Bird. what was going to happen to you. What was going to happen to you? Uh, but there's but a little I, thing I called this. the sun. Okay, it's new. Clearly, the sun is new. It's very hot. Very hot. Um, so yeah, I, you know, first off, I, I love what Cassius Marsh had to say. And again, I think it's really important to remember that this is the guy who's been to two Super Bowls, right? Now he lost them both, but he's, he's been to two Super Bowls. So he's, he's not a, he's, he's not someone who doesn't know what it's like and what it takes to reach a championship. That's what I think is really important. So somebody who knows what it is to dedicate yourself, to put your body on the line for at that point, you know, anywhere from, you know, 17 to 19 games or something else like that. He is a credible source of criticism. And I like what he had to say, because let's be honest, and you guys got into this, this idea, you don't have to be miserable to be successful. That is garbage. That is nonsense. That is what abusive systems use to rationalize. And here's the thing, guys, because, you know, the Patriots can say, well, all right, you know, Julian Edelman can say, hey, I got championships. We got championships. Winning is fun. Well, you know what? You're the outlier. Because there's, there's probably 24 other coaches in the NFL who are just as obnoxious, just as abusive, just as abrasive as Bill Belichick. What's their excuse? What's their excuse, right? You don't have to – leadership, organizations don't have to work that way. I used to always say this about Michael Jordan. People are like, oh, Jordan's got dog in him. Jordan's this, that, the other. LeBron doesn't have that kind of leadership. No, LeBron has shown you don't have to be an absolute jerk to be a leader. Tim Duncan showed you don't have to scream at people every day to be a leader. There's leadership that can be effective, that can lift people up. And then I'll also say this, because, Michael, you were talking about it with your last place of employment. I can talk about it in a place that I was employed. I can talk about it in the academic sense, talking about Nicole Hannah-Jones and ta Coates, or, hell, now Cornell West. Go where you can live your life and be successful. Mm. And it is the greatest trick of capitalism to tell you that you have to have a miserable process to have a good result. That's trash. And I'm glad Cassius Marsh is putting it out. Mm, that's good. Yeah, hey, no, you know man. What? Um, sit, sit. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Michael. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, uh, Mike, Mike, since since he brought it up, uh, and, and since you are a professor at a uh, historically black college uh, in University of Morgan State, I, I just let's talk about that. Uh, all all three of the, all three of the people you mentioned, Nicole Hannah Jones specifically, but Cornell West was 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 throwing some punches at Harvard because this is the oh, second yeah. time, second right. time he's left Harvard. Right. And, and Ta-Nehisi Coates. So, is it? Do you just look at it? Because uh, because Coates said something about humanity. He said mm-hmm. it, it's it's tough to go to a place whether you're a student or a professor where you've got to even debate or prove your humanity, your your intellectual value. Do you think this, come, does it come down to that with all three uh, professors that we're talking about? That it's just an issue of, hey, respect their humanity and their genius and, and leave this other stuff aside. Well, I, I think all three of them are, are different in this regard. Now, I'm, I'm going to bring up some criticisms that may not be mine, but some legitimate criticisms out okay. there. Number one, Nicole Hannah-Jones is moving from journalism to academic. So she saw the writing on the wall. She's never even been an academic before. But she's like, I, I'm not trying to go someplace where I'm not going to be appreciated. I'm, I'll tell you the most basic thing, quite realistically, she might have been concerned with. I'm not trying to go to a school where my family or my personal safety and well-being could be at risk because some nutcase decides to come into my class on campus. I don't want to have to teach every day with some right-wing jerk 19-year-old recording every class so he can slide it to Tucker or Sean Hannity, right? That was a, that was a I'm seeing the writing on the wall. I don't want to have to deal with that. ta Coates, you know, hey, he, he went to Howard. He wants to come back to Howard. That makes sense, even though he could probably teach anywhere. 
Cornell West is a slightly different situation. I am not trying to get in trouble, but I'm going to tell you what a lot of black academics are saying. For a guy who spent so much time railing against Howard earlier this year for getting rid of their classics department, he's never had a problem being at a predominantly white institution, no matter how abusive they were to him. So his reason for leaving is absolutely legitimate, but let's be, let's be fair about the fact that he did want to spend 15 years there. And I think a lot of people in, in our generation, Generation X and, and Millennials and Zoomers, are looking at this and saying, like, this ain't got to be an either or. I don't have to go someplace to be mistreated because the name on the door, the logo under my face, or what's going to go on my resume. Because you know what? At the end of the day, all that money can't buy you happiness. And sometimes it's not even about money. That's the thing. That's yeah. the you thing. Know? I, I, hey, Michael, I, I'll, just say this, I'll, just, I'll just say this real, I'll just say this real quick. I have come to learn took me a while, but there is a major difference between being paid and being valued. Yeah, and your value mm. it, it, it may be a reflection. <laughs> there may be a reflection in your salary as it relates to your value, but you can get paid a hell of a lot of money and still not be valued. Every Michael, single damn yes. of the church are open. <laughs> okay, there we go. That, that like, <laughs> let's go. That's what I'm talking yes. about. Hey, and, let. Oh, go ahead, Doc. Go ahead. Yeah, and I was, and I was gonna say this, and I can tell you, and, and, and see, it's one of those things. I'm sure Michael could talk about. We could all talk about this situation. And it, and if you don't know, the people who love you can tell, because they can tell when you've left that job, and your whole attitude yeah, is yeah. different. <laughs> Your whole attitude is different because <laughs> right. you don't even Ooh, realize. Right. That's, you know, good. <laughs> you, That's good. You hear Cassius Mars saying that man wanted to stop playing football, something he's probably been playing since he was nine years old. Top four months with the Patriots made him say, I don't even know if I want to do this anymore, right? So it tells you that the work environment can take the joy out of you. I was at an institution. I was at a small liberal arts, uh, a majority white college in Ohio for a very, very long time. And it was for the last several years, an absolutely miserable experience. Uh, the, the endemic racism, the cowardice, and, and one thing that we can all, again, any African-American professional can talk about is, it's not that you have to be in the most racist of environments. What really pisses you off is all it takes is one empowered racist and all your other white employees and coworkers to not do anything about it. I, if I had a quarter for the number of people who came to me privately through email, text messages. I can't believe they're treating you this way. You don't say nothing in the staff meeting, right? While this person's right. harassing them. That, that's why so many people are going to HBCUs. I'm not saying HBCUs are perfect, but you ain't got to deal with that level of abuse. And and, and I'm sure Cassius Marsh is saying to himself, hey, look, I, I can only play this game for so long and get my knees hurt, whatever. I'd rather get yelled at by Mike Tomlin and know where I stand than have to get abused by Bill Belichick and never know week to week if I still have a job. Now, let me ask you this. We, we've been trying to bring up the uh, Emmys for a couple of days, and I just want to hit it from this angle. I was looking at the list, and I saw Lovecraft Country, Lovecraft Country, Jonathan right. Majors. <laughs> I mean, I see like uh, on and on writing all these c uh, categories, and yet it's not being picked up by HBO. And I heard you and Tiffany talking about this on IG Live. What gives, though, Jason? What gives? This I thought it was a great show. And it's one and done. What's up? Not only is it a great show, but as you mentioned on IG Live, and I know some people who work in and around that show, um, it's about to hit 10 million streams on HBO Max. Like, it's actually one of their highest rated streamers. So people are re-watching and rediscovering it even before this sort of stuff happened. But what happens? Mr. Green gets cut. Now, I'm going to go into some of that inside stuff because this also comes into play. The rumor being spread in trades and stuff is that Misha Green was somewhat difficult to work with. You know what? I don't know if she is or not, but I promise you that there are plenty of white men, directors and producers and writers in Hollywood who've Thank been difficult you. for decades and they get to keep their shows. There have been plenty of powerful white men in positions of authority Thank as you. producers who, who, who turn in their shows a year and a half later. How long did we have to wait between seasons of The Sopranos? Right, but they just wanted to keep David Chase. So unless you're telling me that Misha Green came into work every day and smacked everybody upside the head with a wet sock, I think that her talent and the success of that show should have guaranteed another season. What we're seeing right now, it's interesting, is other networks are now feeling stupid. 
because they're all coming back as me. Like, oh, yo, they got all these awards. Uh, maybe we can call it, but too late. Now she's going to Apple Plus. Go where you're going to be, like you said, Michael. Go where you're going to be valued. And 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 obviously the consumers hey, I- out there are saying we're tired of all these shows that don't reflect the diversity of America. We got to let you go soon. I got one more quick thing I want to touch on, I, but I, I had to stand up and I had to, you know, come to the altar and, 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 and give an <laughs> offer and I had to claim that word because we were talking earlier about, you know, like, yeah, like I've, I've had that. I've had that tag applied to me before. Difficult, uh, yeah. you know, uh, you know, like, you know, emotional or whatever. It's like, no, I'm demanding. I got a high standard and I got plenty of white counterparts compared to who I'm a teddy bear. Okay, but if I'm mm-hmm. white, then it's like, oh, yeah, he just, he, you know, he just wants to be great, you know, but I'm black. I'm an angry black man. Anyway, right. uh, before we let you go, brother, um, today is National Mac and Cheese Day, which I thought that was every day. I just want a Jason Johnson uh, <laughs> ma- uh, Mac and Cheese hot take on the way out. I just saw, I don't know if you guys saw me tweet this out, but somebody, some, some, this was an Eater magazine, and somebody came up with uh, mac and cheese flavored ice cream. I need our cousins and other communities to stop. Stop abusing mac and cheese. It is not meant for ice cream. It does not need raisins. It does not need crispy nuts on top of it. If you cannot make mac and cheese, find some person of color in your community, an aunt, a cousin, an uncle, to make you some mac and cheese. Stop with this culinary violence. And I will say this. I went to the mac and cheese festival in Baltimore in 2019 before the city shut down. It was incredible. They had all sorts of samples of mac and cheese from different kinds of restaurants because they respected the core. Respect the core of mac and cheese and your stomach will respect it. <laughs> See, you tell a lot about a person. About that, was, that was a word. That was a word <laughs> with Jason Johnson. Dr. Jason Johnson, yes. we appreciate you as usual. Hey, man, we're not going to see you for a while. We're we about to go on yes, break. Right. That's right. Look, we about I to will, I will check. I will, I will, I will be texting you guys my obnoxious hot takes. By the way, Suns are going to win tonight. Giannis is not that good. They'll fight out and they'll end up being six game series. Hey man, why are you be calling? Me? I, look, Giannis, why, he ain't really. How about that silent G? Can you give me a silent G? Giannis, Giannis, whatever. Control it. <laughs> the G stands for gamer. Okay, he ain't got none, so the G is silent. Look, they're going to lose. Chris Paul's going to get his ring, and by the time we're back, by the time we're back, he'll hey. be a champion in field. Don't send us into vacation with no horrible takes on Giannis, man. <laughs> the, the, the dude's had back-to-back 40-point games, and you talking about he ain't got game. He ain't got game. He ain't got game. He ain't got heart. What's wrong with 40 and 10? There's an ice box. 40 and 10? Unbelievable. I don't, I, don't see, I don't see anything. Unbelievable. Else. And when he loses six games to Chris 40 Paul, and 10 ain't good enough. Six games, that'll be the end of the Giannis story. Back-to-back. Back-to-back 40 <laughs> and 10, Mike. All right, Doc. Don't Doc. even matter. <laughs> Later, guys. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.